Well, Down syndrome, yes, it is a part of our children's lives, but it, it does not define them. I think for me, it, you know, the original diagnosis was terrifying because it was, you know, all the I all I could think of was the negatives, but now all I can think of is the person that's sitting upstairs. Right. You know? yeah. And it's different, you know. I didn't know him. You know, he was just born, so I didn't know him. So all I could think of was the things that were going to be that were going to be taken away, rather than the things that were possible. And now it's kind of the exact 180 of that, and it's the things that are possible. While the initial shock of a Down syndrome diagnosis can be paralyzing. As their children grow older, these families have learned how enriching this life can actually be. Down syndrome is a chromosome condition, or abnormality as they call it. It's when an individual is born with three copies of the 21st chromosome instead of two. So the extra copy of that 21st chromosome presents itself in different ways. One is like small stature, sometimes kids have low muscle tone, various different things like that. Even though the original challenges were tough, the Lombardos have seen all of the unexpected gifts their daughter has brought them. Um, well, when I was pregnant with Grace, uh, I kind of, we did a couple of tests and one of them said, you know what, there might be a possibility that she might have Down syndrome, but we're not really sure. So they did more tests and then they said, oh no, you know, she's fine, no need to worry. So we kind of just put it out of our minds because she also had a little hole in her heart. So that was kind of our bigger issue that we were following up. Uh, and then after she was born, two hours after she was born, her pediatrician came in and told us that she had Down syndrome. Looking back at the very beginning, personally, it was like a shock, you know, a sadness. But then now looking at it now, it's kind of affected me in the way that I, I've met new people through it. I kind of feel I've um, gained a better understanding of God in a way, maybe better understanding of myself as a person as far as you know, overcoming this sadness that it was when she was first born to like seeing the joy of it and seeing how she really is a true blessing. My hopes for her would be the same as her brothers, you know, that she would grow up and um, do something that she enjoys doing as far as like working, that she'd be able to work and provide for herself. And on a more spiritual level, I do pray that her as well as all my other kids would know Jesus in a personal way and that they would have that relationship with him. The main fear is like she'd be alone. Like when my husband and I, you know, passed away or, you know, going to heaven, who would look after her? And I would hope that our kids, one of her brothers would or all of them. I would like to think that my kids, since they're all boys, to have a little girl in the family adds a little, you know, girlness to it. And I really do see like their tenderness or the tender side of them that maybe perhaps wouldn't have been out if they didn't have a little sister who has Down syndrome. I think she's taught me to persevere. I mean, definitely she she's consistently, you know, optimistic. She's always trying things even though they're hard for her. She continues to do it. So I guess it's taught me also to be a little bit more assertive on her behalf. Just like Grace, Michael Schuler joined an already large family. Over time, his family has seen how much he's taught them without them even knowing. I had no idea what to expect. I had never known anyone with Down syndrome before I met Michael. Um, and it's clearly opened my eyes to a com complete population of people who I never knew before, never really knew they existed, um, and can really appreciate. Being a realization that life's not perfect and that you know, the maybe the the expectations you have have to be altered because of the situation, but it doesn't mean it's anything worse. It's just different. Clearly, I've gained a perspective um, in terms of noticing gifts in others that uh, maybe I wouldn't have recognized before I had Michael. Uh, because it is a little surreal at times to think that um, my son, who is, is a delight to me and whom loves me and, and, and I him, uh, is something that um, the majority of people in society fear. And, and it is really kind of surreal when you step to think that that's the case uh, because I've just gained so much from knowing him that I really feel if you just give him a chance, you'll see what a delight he is and how amazing he truly is. And not just him, but all people. You know, early on when you find this out, you're like, you're, you're effectively kind of devastated by the news. 
But part of that is just like fear of the unknown, like any any news would be. But I think when you first find out, you, you don't know if you don't know anything about Down syndrome, you think it's much worse than it actually is. Well, I mean, he didn't really choose to be how he is. I mean, he's all, he's also he's just I just say he's a great guy, and so I mean, you just have to give him a chance, and you just have to get you have to give him a chance to impress you because he will impress you. Even though they have had to overcome challenges, the Bresnahans cannot imagine life without Ryan. It's almost hard to remember what it was like, so it, it feels as if it hasn't affected our family at all. It's just our family, you know? So, um, but you know, when he was first born, there was a lot of fear there that we didn't, I didn't know anyone with Down syndrome, so I didn't know how, what that was gonna entail or what would be, but um, I would say it's affected our lives for the better. We don't know what it would have been like otherwise, but it sure feels as if, you know, now after we got over the initial fear that he's just added a lot to our lives. When, you when I first got that diagnosis, the first thing I thought of was things that weren't going to happen. There wasn't, he wasn't going to drive. There's a good chance he wasn't going to attend college. There was, you know, there were so many things that I thought that were, I put up all the roadblocks, you know, and I did it myself. It wasn't Ryan or anything. I did it myself. And now, you know, now that Ryan's doing what Ryan's doing, you know, it, it kind of knocks down the walls for me, you know, because he can do anything he wants, you know, it's going to be up to him. And If you had told me when he was first born that he wouldn't walk until three and a half or he wouldn't be potty trained at five and a half, he'd probably pass out, right? But now, since we're going through the journey with him, you know, we know we'll get there. We got there with the walking, we'll get there with everything. You just look at the world through a different lens than you used to when you're on the other side of the fence, kind of a thing. And some people you can say, okay, well, you know, they get it, they're with me, and other people can say, oh, they're not against me, but they're also not there to help me either. It's the doctor at the hospital who broke the news to us about Ryan's syndrome was, you know, it's a hard job for her to say that to us, not knowing. And she was wonderful. And it ended up, she was the only one of the, of the, of the obstetricians, or the, the prenatal, as Trisha was saying, who was positive. She said, you know, your child being born with Down syndrome, you shouldn't look at this as anything, you know, different than just having a child who who's born okay. Because even even from five years ago, they've made leaps and bounds in the field of, of special needs with kids with Down syndrome or, or any of the syndromes or anything or autism or anything like that. I hope for him that you know. I think it's what your hopes are for any child, whether they have um, a disability or not, that you want them to be content and happy with their life the way it is. And in Ryan's, we do have to think about the independent part of it and hope that he can live as independently as possible because I think he'll want to. Even though um, at first glance, what clearly was not seen as a gift uh, is far beyond anything I could have ever hoped for in certain respects. That um, I wouldn't be the person I am today without and I know when we first found out, and I know talking to some of my friends too, it's kind of like a devastating diagnosis. You're like, oh. you know, because uh, um, there really isn't that much positive stuff out there. I remember somebody saying to me when we were, you know, I guess we were breaking the news to people when or after Ryan was born. And somebody said, I'm sorry. And I said, don't be sorry. He's my son. And, and you know, don't be sorry. I have a, I have a second child now. And so I, I kind of want people to not to think it's this horrible, terrible diagnosis that it, you know, it can be a pretty enriching life actually, you know, if you, if you give it the opportunity.